hey guys, I'm here with the uh, Loki Blink paper, uh, and I'm just going to give you a quick summary of what's contained in the paper so that if you don't go through the 25 pages uh, of documentation, you can still get an idea of what Blink is actually doing. Um, but always, if you want to read in detail about what's happening and see these little diagrams here, for example, um, it's all explained um, in the LIP4, so you'll be able to find that on our GitHub, and I'm sure we'll put a link in the description as well of this video. The general idea comes from, uh, it comes from Dash, actually. So it comes from the instant send idea in Dash. Um, the kind of general concept is, if I go to a store and I wanna pay them, uh, I, I wanna be able to walk out of that store and the store owner wants to have confidence that there's actually been a transaction that's going to hit the chain and they're going to be paid all of the money that they're owed. Now in Bitcoin, for example, and, and this is a kind of tangential example because Bitcoin is quite safe in its construction, but if I went to a store and paid with something in Bitcoin, there is an opportunity that I could actually use something called replace by fee, where I could send that transaction to the merchant and then send it with a really low fee that I know isn't gonna confirm for a while and then go back home and send a replace by fee transaction where that the transaction that I originally sent to the merchant is actually redirected back to me. And because that transaction, the second transaction I send has a higher fee, it's more likely to get confirmed in front of the old one. Um, and even then, even if I didn't use that system, there's the whole idea of a double spend, for example. So if I go to a merchant and I send them a transaction and it's in one block, for example, then the merchant goes, okay, yeah, that's cool. You can walk away now. There's always the, the chance that someone could come along with a chain that's say three blocks long that they've been mining privately that doesn't include that transaction and submit that to the network. So the idea of um, instant send in Dash was how do we get around this? How do we make sure that when someone sends a transaction to someone in this special mode, that it's always going to confirm no matter what? Uh, and that was the basic idea. So we looked at this idea and we thought it was really interesting because it enables a whole um, use case of like um, point of sale kind of transactions where you can instantly send and you can just walk away. Um, so we looked at that and we thought, how can we integrate this into a system like Loki where we're actually using a crypto note style transactions where it's not just one, out, one unspent output or a number of unspent outputs directed towards the merchant. It's actually like this ring of unspent outputs. And for someone who doesn't know what an unspent output is, it's basically just uh, you know, any coins that haven't been uh, spent yet. So you have coins in your wallet and your balance is um, you know, in the green, then you've got some unspent outputs to spend. Um, so what happens in, in Monero and by extension Loki is you create this ring of unspent outputs where you've got some outputs from the chain that aren't yours and then you've got yours as well. So how can we actually do a transaction where we're locking uh, someone's funds and sending it to the merchant when we don't really know what the outputs are, are doing? We don't know if they're yours or not. We don't want to lock someone else's output for outputs, for example. And Monero uh, and to Accenture CryptoNote offers this system called key images. And the idea of a key image is if I create a ring signature spending my outputs twice, uh, that should be detectable. So if I you know, create a transaction, then go down the street and create another transaction with the same outputs, I should create the same key image. And this is the idea, um, and this is how like, kind of, um, CryptoNerd is protected from double spends. So what we actually do in Blink is instead of locking the outputs directly, we actually lock the key images themselves. Um, and that's kind of the basic idea of Blink and what we described in our white paper. Now this document goes into a lot more detail about how that should be actually technically carried out. But the short and long of it is that uh, very soon you'll be able to go to any merchant, say online or brick and mortar, and pay them with a Blink transaction, which has a little bit of an additional fee to it. Um, and that will be instantly confirmed and then the merchant will be able to use that money if they want instantly and they'll also be able to have the confidence that when you walk out of that store or when you leave their website, that transaction has to go on chain. It, there's no other way it can you know, be bumped out of the pool. So 
Hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how Blink works. If you want to read more about the details, you can visit the link in the description where you'll be able to see all of the document. It's about 25 pages, so um, get ready. If you're a technical person, you'll love it. Um, and also hit up our other social media channels if you want to discuss uh, LIP4. If you find any issues, we'd love to hear them. Um, but yeah, thanks guys for listening.